Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to master Albert Park here in Australia on F1 23. This track is high speed, technical, flowing and requires the utmost confidence to nail, especially those high speed sequences. The curbs are challenging, the grass is close and the ability to be precise with your steering wheel inputs will maximise your lap time potential here. Coming down into turn one, you'll be braking around 70 meters, or if you can spot while driving at high speed, this little strip of tarmac on the left hand side. If you can't spot that while driving at speed, because it is very difficult, I would advise braking just between 150 meter board, and that'll be allowing you to come down into an appropriate speed. Turn one is very challenging. As you can see, as you get towards the apex, there's a small dip in the road. As I've talked about in previous videos, when you're going downhill, you lose grip, and when you're going uphill, you gain grip. That's a very basic summary of racing cars and grip, but that is basically how it works. As you go towards the apex, you go a little bit downhill, and as you go towards the exit of the corner, you go uphill again. So that can cause you a bit of car instability as you reach the apex, and again, as you're going out of the apex. If you have the confidence to take the inside curbing, knowing that it will unsettle the car, this can be faster, but if you're just learning the car and want to get up to speed, I advise not taking the inside curbing at all, as it will help the stability of the car. On the exit, you want to be using up as much road as possible. Something that's very misunderstood on Albert Park is often people think that the track limit is the yellow line but in fact it's the white line and as soon as you go over the white line and that's when it will be invalidated i have to admit it is quite confusing because on other tracks you only have one solid line that defines the track limit um and for this you have two lines so when driving at high speed it can be a misconception but that is how to maximize the track here so you want to be using the astroturf on the exit of turn two and then full speed on the exit and opening up DOS as fast as possible. Try to avoid using the exit curb there as just adds unnecessary risk towards your lap. Approaching what will be turn three, you'll be braking at the 100 meter board on the left hand side. Very similar to turn one, the track has a dip in the apex. You can just about see it from here. As you're arriving and you get to about the 50 meter board, You'll be going down the gears, of course, and you get to the peak of this many mini hill. As you're crossing this zebra crossing, the track starts to go downhill a little bit towards the apex. You can start to see it here in a better form. A general tip for you at home is if you want to see the different hills and variations of track height, using the nose camera within the game is a much better way to do that as you sit lower down relative to the camera position so it can allow a greater evaluation of track height differences whereas while in TCAM you don't see it as much to be honest although TCAM is much better for driving being in the nose camera of the game can be much better for evaluating different elevation changes in the game so much similar to turn one as you'll be turning into the apex but in turn three will be a much greater effect compared to turn one you'll start to get a bit of instability in the car a bit of understeer initially and you just have to play with this it's something that's going to happen you have to accept that it's going to happen and you're going to have to try to drive around it to the greatest ability possible massively avoid this inside curb as it's quite bumpy as i'll try and drive over with you now and show it's quite bumpy, you can see the car is bouncing around a little bit, even at this low speed, and it will just unsettle the car and cost you grip, confidence, and potential lap time. So only go up to the white line there, and that is the perfect racing line, getting the white line, but not going over the curbing. The perfect racing line here is exiting the corner, actually where this black line is. You do not want to go all the way to the left as you want to focus to bring the car back over the right-hand side. So like I say, where this little black line is on the track, that is the ideal racing line to exit corner three on. Coming up to turn four, you bring the car all the way into the right-hand side. The further right you can bring the car, the better, 
and you'll be turning in a black box on the left hand side. Avoid the curb on the inside, but like the common theme goes, get to the white line as that will give you the maximum track width possible. On the exit, I like to run all the way out here and use a maximum of the track for width and then bring the car hard back to down to the left hand side to open up turn five. Turn five, again, do not touch the inside curbing as in qualifying, it will be flat out here just about. But if you touch the inside curbing, you'll lose speed as the car will start to bounce around. And you might even end up in the outside wall. So only go up to the white line if you can be that precise. If not, take a lift as it will be better than the risk of crashing. On the exit, you normally will be forced to use the exit curb here and try to bring the car off this as fast as possible. As like I can say, it's bouncing the car around and will lose you lap time potential. So it's very critical to bring the car off the curb as fast as possible. But you probably will be forced to use it to keep the car flat out during turn five. Arriving at very difficult turn six, you want to bring the car over to the right hand side and then make it as straight as possible for the braking zone. What I like to do is brake as soon as I get to this exit barrier here. You can see on the left hand side, the barrier has a dip here. And that is basically for marshals to stick the flag out of. Um, in a situation so when that barrier ends on the left hand side this is where I like to break for turn six turning in a roughly around the 50 meter board compared to different turns on this track you actually want to use the inside curb here it's relatively flat and actually gives you a good ability to rotate the car as will give you more track width and this turn becomes very narrow and tight and technical on the exit here Similar to turns one and three, the track does have a dip as you go towards the apex, so expect the car to become unstable on the entry and exit. Again, it's something that you can't really change, you just have to deal with it to the best of your ability. So like I say, using the inside curbing and using all of the outside curbing as well, right up to the white line to give maximum track width potential. Coming down the straight, you want to hold the car to the inside line, to not use up any extra track distance, opening up DRS and really flying down this track, hugging the inside, and then as the corner starts to open up, bring the car to the outside for one of the most treacherous and difficult corners on the track in the Nephron calendar as well. Come qualifying, this corner is so difficult to nail. You'll be looking to hit the brakes at the 50 meter board and turn in when this white line ends underneath the car as well. You'll be looking to try and get two wheels on the inside curbing. It can unsettle the car. If you're comfortable with the car being unsettled, it's better to use the inside curbing. will give extra track width. If you're not comfortable with the car being unsettled, only go up to the yellow line, as that will give you a slower but more consistent racing line. Bring the car to the middle of the track between the two apexes, and it's so critical here to commit to this inside curbing. It will unsettle the car, and the car will bounce around a little bit. But the extra track width that you're going to be able to gain can gain you so much time through this next apex. You can see the curb is quite big there, so you have to be quite cautious with it. On the exit, run your car over the exit curbing as it will gain you lap time. But again, be careful of this white line as going over it will invalidate your lap time. Bring the car off the curbing as fast as possible to try and avoid any chance of the lap being invalidated. Opening up DRS, and this will be running up to a very difficult braking zone where you'll be braking at the 50 meter board. The, in my opinion, the 50, 100 and 150 meter board are out of sync with actually where the corner is. So you'll be braking at the 50 meter board, even though realistically it's about 100 meters away from the corner. The braking zone is a bit curved, so it's very tricky and technical. And you have to have a lot of confidence to remain with the car in a straight line in the run up to the braking zone and run the car to its maximum track width and open up the corner as much as possible. So it's very tight here. Again, trying to avoid the inside curb and only going up to the white line will give you the best results possible during this corner. Using up all the curb on the exit and this will be very critical to not let the car run over the grass as you're returning back to the track. As one, this will cause you traction loss, but two, the grass can stay on the tire and cause you grip loss running up to this next speed, high speed right-hander. During this right-hander, the tires will be screaming here in the race and qualifying conditions. So it's critical to try and do a very gentle brake 
in this corner to keep the car as consistent as possible. If you hit the brakes very abruptly, the car can start to oversteer and slide. If you hit the brake very gently and be very smooth with your input, the car will be more precise and will be more predictable. Do not take the inside curbing here as will give a big risk of oversteer. Use the exit curbing here, but as soon as the car has got straight and stable in the exit, bring the car back over to the right as fast as possible. You'll be braking just before the 50 meter board. And again, the track has a bit of a dip towards the middle of the apex. It's very easy to lock up the inside tire here because of the dip. But again, it's not something that you can really change. It's something that you're just gonna have to deal with. Maybe even moving the brake bias a few clicks backwards, a few percent backwards can help with the stability underneath the braking zone. As you come towards the middle of the corner, you will face a bit of understeer here because the front tires are going to be so hot because of the previous high speed corners. And you're just going to have to try and maximize the corner potential knowing that the tires are hot. You do not actually want to bring the car all the way to the exit curb here because you want to maximize your car's ability to bring the car back over to the left. It, ideally, turning into the final corner here, you'll be turning in with your left tyres towards this white line. The further you can get to the left, the better, but at a minimum, you want to be getting to the white line here, opening up the final corner. Do not take the inside curbing and be smooth on the exit, opening up DRS, and that is a lap of Australia. And now I'm going to take you on a high-speed lap here, explaining in detail. So looking between the 100 and 50 metre board, Again, avoiding the curb for stability, hard back on the power on the exit. Opening up DRS, do not take the curb on the exit. Black board at the left, 100 meter board, down the gears into third gear. Do not take the curb on the inside. And now bring the car to the left and open up the corner as much as possible. Hard back on the power, take a little bit of the exit curb because it's quite necessary. When the car's straight, down two gears to fifth gear. I missed my apex a little bit there, but it wasn't too compromising. Flat out through these kinks and opening up DRS as fast as possible. Coming up to the high speed flowing technical corners here. We're looking for the 50 meter board and going down two gears. One, two. I missed my apex there, but you want to be aiming for the second apex and opening up the DRS as fast as possible. Breaking at the 50 meter board, down the gears. And that was very sweet. Use the exit curve, avoid the grass. Hold it in fifth gear, a little dab of the brake, smooth back on the power into the final few corners, down into third gear, get the car to the middle and then to the left and opening up the final apex of the track. And this is a full speed lap of Albert Park Australia and how you can master your lap times around this fantastic track. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Brendan Lee. If you enjoyed this video, I'll be doing a track guide for every single track on the F123 game. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe to see those on my channel very soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.